ladies and gentlemen, I managed to play every single healer hero talent spec on the War Within beta, including the updated Restoration Shaman talents. You can watch some gameplay footage in the rest of the videos uploaded to the channel, but right now we're gonna rank them all in a tier list. We are starting with Totemic Restoration Shaman and boy this one feels really good to play. You get a lot of free chain heals when you cast your totems, you get a free healing rain from your surging totem, a lot of synergy with the new hero talents and the new spec tree, and yes, it has some things that still need some polishing, it sucks to have Totemic Projection in order to move your surging totem, it actually uses mana, that's one of the few classes that needs mana in order to heal, but it's gonna be viable both in M+, and in rate, so I think this is a very very easy S tier. Next up is Farseer Restoration Shaman and although I'm a big fan of this hero talent spec, it's lacking behind a little bit compared to Totemic. It did get some buffs in the form that you can now proc your ancestors from Undulation, which is good but at the same time is also a little bit weird to play with and it's not very easy to time. Not to mention that I was heavily relying on Downpour in this build, but playing with Downpour in M+, is a bit sketchy in general. I think this build is definitely going to shine more in Raid, but in M+, you're probably always going to lean back into Totemic. So it's definitely one tier lower, but I'm even going to put it down to B, just because of the difference between the two. Voidweaver Discipline Priest is another hero talent spec that feels great to play with and it looks amazing with its visuals, but there are a lot of weaknesses. Outside of your cooldowns and outside of your Void Rift, it feels really hard to maintain and heal your allies, not to mention the lack of a kick and the very weak tier set compared to some of the other classes. This one can actually feel quite nice in raid, where you can rely on the rest of the healers to fill in the gaps when you don't have anything rolling, but in M+, it's not gonna be that great for sure. Maybe a little bit of tuning before the release is going to help a lot in that direction, but for now I think we have to put this down into the B tier as well. Archon Holy Priest feels pretty much like the Void Weaver Disc Priest. Playing with the Empowered Halos feels amazing and it looks great, but outside of that and if you don't have a big cooldown like Apotheosis rolling, it feels quite weak, especially if you have to do a lot of AoE healing to your group. If you can survive the downtime when you don't have anything rolling, and with the halos pumping a lot especially in raid, it should be in a pretty good spot, but something prevents me from putting this higher than the farce here, so it's gonna go down into the B tier as well. Oracle for both Holy and Disc Priest provides you with a new talent which cycles between different skills that you need to time and use correctly in order to get the most out of them. In fact, they're pretty good and they have a lot of potential, but at the same time they're making the playstyle a lot more complex. So I'm gonna be very biased here and put this pretty low in the tier list, but keep in mind that if played correctly, I'm pretty sure that Oracle is going to outperform the other two hero talent specs but that's going to require a lot more skill, theory crafting and min maxing. And while if put into the correct hands this could easily be A tier at least, considering the rest of the weaknesses that the priest has, along with the more fun and smoother gameplay of the other hero talent specs, I'm going to put this down into the C tier. Lightsmith Holy Pounding has very interesting gameplay with you throwing shields and weapons to empower your allies, making you very strong into spot healing, but it kinda lacks a little bit into the AoE department, especially when there is pulsing big bursts of damage. There's also a huge cognitive load when you have to cast those shields and weapons because they rotate on the same skill button, pretty much the same as Blessing of Summer, so if you play all of this, it just becomes a little bit too much, at least to my liking. The hero talent spec is probably going to be very good into M+, but I don't think it's going to be very good in raid. Especially if you compare the throughput of the shields and the weapons with the other hero talent spec that the Holy Paladin has, so I'm gonna be a little bit harsh here, but I'm going to put this down into the C tier as well. 
Arrow to the Sun is the other option for the Holy Paladin and this one feels much better as the Dawn Lights are going to bring a lot of value in both Mythic Plus and Raid environments. The throughput is quite nice, the Sun's avatar feels amazing once you pop your wings, and along with all the other changes that Holy Paladin's seen in the recent weeks, that puts the whole class in a pretty good spot. Of course, assuming there's a lot more tuning to happen, this could go either way, but right now it feels pretty damn good, so I'm going to put it up into the A tier. Conduit of the Celestials is pretty much the same Mist River Monk that we've been playing throughout Dragonflight, but with some of the talents trimmed and changed, and on their place there's a new big cooldown that you can use at your disposal. It's pretty powerful as it calls all four Celestials to help you, but when you're not using it you still benefit from the Celestials in some way by pressing your regular rotation buttons. All of that complements the Monk gameplay in Mythic Plus in a very very nice way, but at the same time I think it should be still viable to play in Raid as well. With that in mind, I think it's fine to put this up there next to the Totemic Restoration Shaman into the S tier. Master of Harmony is the other option for Mist River Monk and is it me but this hero talent doesn't have an icon yet? But anyway, this one feels pretty good on paper, storing vitality and then releasing it to do more healing and damage, however playing in M+, I just couldn't feel the benefits that much. It should have been really nice because it's on a very short cooldown, but it just the impact wasn't there. Maybe it's me and I didn't play it correctly, or maybe it needs a little bit of tuning, but right now Conduit of the Celestials definitely shines more in Mythic Plus. This spec though could be quite viable in Raid, as supposedly you're going to store more vitality there and just release it to have healing only, but only time will tell. For now, I think we're just going to put this down into the B tier. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be very harsh with Wildstalker Druid as well, but this hero talent pack actually has a lot of throughput. It incentivizes you to go into a cat form and do a lot of cat weaving to do extra damage and healing, which sounds pretty good for Metic Plus, but I don't see it working that well in Raid. When it comes to numbers, tuning, healing, damage in Metic Plus, I think this might be one of the top performing packs next season and a lot of people will probably play it. Me included, so in that respect it's probably easy S tier, however I'm gonna put it all the way down to C, because it's forcing you to do this type of hybrid healing going into cat form and weaving there, and although the numbers look good, it's not enough so you have to go back into caster form, do some healing there and so forth, and that was the case before, but before you were not forced to go into a cat form to do some healing. So as I said, very harsh, personal preference and if you're ranking those true power this is definitely wrong, but for now I'm gonna keep it down there. The other option for Druid is Keeper of the Groove and this one actually felt quite nice to play as a caster healer. You're buffing your Groove Guardians who now also do damage and you're staying in caster form to do both healing and damage which should easily outperform Wildstalker in Raid, but I have a high hope that this is going to feel quite nice in Mythic Plus as well. There's a big scare here related to tuning, because although your caster spells are buffed, it might be the case that you still need to go into cat form to put some bleeds on your targets for extra damage, and that would push this spec down through the ranks, but for now I think it's fair to put it into A. Chrono Warden for Preservation Evoker is basically more of the same gameplay style that we had before, but now your Living Flames are empowered, your Empower spells cast additional Living Flames and they give you extra cooldown reduction so you can cast more of them, and it feels like you're playing the same Preservation Evoker from Dragonflight, but on steroids. And yes, the range restriction is still going to be there, but I think this Hero Talent spec is going to perform nicely both in Mythic Plus and in Raid. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one out and I'm going to give it A. Flame Shaper Preservation Invoker is the other option and this one is going to get a little bit of the Wildstalker Rise to Druid treatment. You're getting a new skill called Engulf and it's actually pretty powerful instant single cast heal or damaging spell, 
but using it is actually quite complex because there's a lot of ways to combine it with echo, with temporal anomaly, and it also interacts in different ways with your breath spells. So kind of like with the priest's oracle, if used correctly and put into the right hands, it could be very powerful and it could easily outperform the Chrono Warden. However, it definitely brings a lot more complexity to a class that is already complex in my eyes. So for that reason alone, I'm going to put it down into the S tier. That concludes our tier list, let me know in the comments below if you agree or not, and also which hero tyrants are you looking forward to playing into the war within. I'll see you guys in the next video, now get out of here.